Hey guys, welcome to this Rhino tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how to create this kind of a spiral ramp that leads to an upper floor. And we are also going to take a look at how to create these railings. So let's go ahead and start creating this. So I'll select all of this for now and just type in hide so I can hide it. Now let's go ahead and start creating such a geometry. So maybe I'll double click on perspective and go inside my top view and I'll start creating my ramp over here. So the first thing that I'll do is create two circles of four meters and two meters radius each. So I'll select the circle tool from over here. And I'll create a circle over here with a radius of four and I'll press enter and I'll create another circle inside this using the same tool and I'll make it a radius of two and I'll press enter. So once I'm done, then I'll create a rectangle from this particular side and I'll extend it over here in this manner. So I'll select the polyline tool. I'll create a line from end to end. I'll create another line from here to about 20 meters, press enter, the snap and I'll take a reference line from this end so that I know where it ends, it'll end over here and I'll close the curve over here and once I'm done I'll just press enter, select this whole assembly, I'll just join it by pressing join and now let's go back into our perspective viewport and see what we have created we have something like this in our perspective viewport now I'll just select the whole thing by holding on to shift I'll select it one by one and I'll maybe copy it by using control C and control V and once it is copied I'll just move it by a distance of four meters make sure your unit is in meters over here and once uh, you move it by a distance of four meters, now we can actually start creating our ramp. Now let's go ahead and create our ramp over here using the helix command. So before creating the ramp, I'll just make another extra curve from this end to this end so that I can snap properly. And once you have this particular curve made up, now I can actually go ahead and create a spiral ramp using the helix command. So I'll just type helix command line I'll start my axis somewhere over here at the end if you are having a tough time starting your axis over here I can just go ahead and create another line from this end to this end make sure it's created properly and now I can actually go ahead and type helix press enter I'll start my axis somewhere over here in the mid and I'll end the axis somewhere over here it should be perpendicular once I'm done, I can actually create the radius. You can see once I snap my edge or the radius over here, it's actually creating, starting the ramp from this edge. So instead of that, I'll just snap it over here so that I can create, so that the radius can start on that particular end. So once I'm done, I'll just click and there you go. We have created a ramp with a particular pitch in mind. If I just use Ctrl Z and go back a little bit and use the helix command again, you can actually understand that how much pitch I have given over here. So you have the option of the diameter, you have the option of the mode which is changed to turns, you have the option of the turns. Now the turns, if you change it from 1.75 to maybe 1, you will have a different kind of, you know, ramp with a different kind of slope. So based on the height that I have given over here, which is four meters, I have determined that the number of turns that I need are 1.75, which is fitting in perfectly according to my calculations. So once you're done, you can just uh, adjust your pitch wherever you want to just make sure that you know where the ramp is starting and where the ramp is ending. Once you're done, you can just click and now let's go ahead and hide all our extra circles. So I'll just select all these extra curves by holding on to shift and I'll just hide them. You can also go ahead and hide these by doing this particular thing. And now you can see that we have created a proper uh, spiral curve with these two 
lines which will actually aid us in creating the sweep for the ramp so now let's go ahead and create a sweep for the ramp so i'll just type in sweep and you have two sweep commands you have sweep one and sweep two let's click on sweep one and first it will ask you to, uh, to select the rail so i'll select the rail and then it will ask you to select the cross section curves i'll select one and two and i'll press enter and once i do you can take a look that how the ramp is created almost in seconds and uh, you can just click on ok and you'll have the spiral ramp uh, that we actually re require for uh, you know our 3d model so now i can just go ahead and show everything that i had hidden and among all these things i'll just hide the circles once again just selecting the circles and i'll hide them uh, now let's go ahead and uh, give our ramp some thickness but before doing that let's create the railings first so i'll just create a simple line from this end and i'll go to my front view uh, so that is the previous model that is the full created model that we i had just shown you guys uh, so this is the model that we were working on so i'll give it a height of 0 0.65 once i'm done i'll just click and press enter I'll go back to my perspective view and now what i can do is Select this particular thing and uh, maybe I can type in pipe, press enter and I can give it a dia of 0 0.015, make sure that the cap is round and I can just press enter and I can type 0 0.015 once again and press enter once again and there you go. So I have created this particular handrail over here, maybe I'll select the curve and just delete it. I'll select my handrail maybe I'll move it inside a little bit so that I have a point of reference from where I'm working on so there you go so now I have the handrail placed perfectly and I'll, and I'll also select this handrail and I'll use ctrl C ctrl V to copy it and paste it and I'll move the handrail on the other end also and once I do so now I'll use the array CRV command to array these handrails uh, about 50 times till the end of the ramp. So I'll just type array and you have the array CRV command as you can see. I'll click on array CRV. It'll ask me to select the objects to array. So I'll select the first one. I'll press enter. I'll select the path curve which is this end curve that I have. And the number of items I'll change it to 50 and make sure that the orientation is no rotation. And you can click on OK. There you go you have all the railings that you need for one end let's repeat the same thing for the other end as well so i can again type array crv select the objects to array you select this end press enter select the curve and make sure you keep the number of items to 50 and orientation to no rotation click on ok and there you go you have your railings now let's create the top rail Alright guys, I guess uh, the curve was accidentally deleted. In, in that case, I'll just select the external curve. Uh, and I'll delete that as well. So maybe I'll select this entire surface and I'll just type DUP border, which will actually create the curve for me. You see, I have the external boundary curve and then maybe I'll just explode it. By typing in explode, I'll deselect these two edges. because I don't need them anymore. And now I have the first curve on the edge and I have the second curve on the outer edge. So I'll just hold on to shift and I'll select both of these curves. And after selecting both of these curves, I'll actually move them by 0 0.65 in the Z axis. And once I do so, you see I have the rail perfectly aligned with all these handrails. So I'll select both of them and I'll type in pipe, press enter, pipe radius can be 0.0. .0 one five the same as we had uh, created for the other ones and make sure that the thick is no and cap is turned to round and you can just press enter and you'll have your handrails perfectly placed now after creating the handrails what we can do is we can go ahead and finish up our slabs uh, so before finishing up the slab i'll just select this entire uh, thing and i'll just type planar srf press enter but as you see, uh, if a person moves around this ramp, this particular, this particular area has to be, you know, kept free for the head height. So I'll just go ahead and create a line from 
from this particular edge get a straight line somehow like this and what I'll do is I'll select this external curve that I had I guess the curve is inside over here now yeah I'll select this external curve and I'll project it on this surface so I'll type project press enter select my poly surface press enter once again and you see I have uh, the boundary that I should delete right now so I'll just create another line from this edge to this edge and maybe I'll extend the line above this a little bit so that there is a little bit of head height and I'll delete this curve delete this one curve and I'll also trim this particular curve by typing in trim select the cutting objects uh, press enter and select the object to trim now what I'll do is I'll type in split, press enter, select my surface, press enter once again and I'll select the cutting objects and I'll press enter and I have split up my surface now, I'll select the external boundary and I'll delete it. Now let's go ahead and create thicknesses for all these uh, geometries so I'll, select uh, so I'll select this particular thing first and I'll type offset SRF and press enter can see the direction of offset make sure that the distance is 0.075 just press enter and I'll have a thickness to my slab let's create the offset for our ramp also I'll just select the ramp I'll type in offset SRF check out the uh, uh, the arrows which will actually show you the, uh, the direction of the offset if you want to flip it you can just click on flip all you see how the arrows are being flipped so I'll keep it down and change the distance from uh, anything else to 0.075 press enter and there you go you have a perfectly created ramp and uh, a perfectly created slab in Rhino 3D.